You printed your prototype, turned out great. Now it's time to run production. But it's just not turning out the same. Layer adhesion's not right, they're stringing everywhere. We don't wanna spend all day adjusting that profile. So what's the solution? So what is the problem we're discussing? Well, the problem we're talking about is what is introduced when we start using continuous printing. And so this is great. Like in this instance, you can load up the build platform and you can print a bunch of parts and let that printer go for a day or two days or whatever, whatever long it takes. Uh, but you could run into stringing and other problems, particularly like if you run out of material and your sensor doesn't pick it up, or if your table moves or your extruder moves a step, then that misstep will be captured in every piece on the table. And that can cause some trouble. So a headache-free solution to continuous printing would be printing them one at a time in the same operation. And your slicer can probably do it. Let's take a look at several different slicers to see how they all handle sequential printing. So this is clearly set up to do continuous printing. You know, we got the build platform maxed out here. This definitely won't work for sequential printing, but let's go ahead and flip it over into that mode and see what starts happening here. I'm gonna to go to my print settings. I'm gonna go down to my output options. And then it says, the very first option says, complete individual objects under sequential printing. Uh, you turn this on, it immediately gives you two, uh, two boxes under that that are now enabled. One of them is your gantry height, uh, where your belts are kind of, and then the other is how big your extruder is, so you definitely wanna do that. Then when you come back over here, you immediately get this error that says some objects are just too close, the extruder will collide. And so now you need to go back into how you place your models. Now placing your models becomes pretty important. In fact, it'd be better to just go ahead and wipe out all of these parts and start fresh. So the reason we deleted all of the parts is because the order that you put them on matters. And in a moment, when we go over Cura, you're gonna notice uh, that it's the exact opposite of Prusa. <laughs> so you drop in your part. For, for, for Prusa, this is the first part that we'll print. And so I like to put him up front. Now, each part that we put in sequentially it will print in that order. So resist the urge to run some kind of duplication or cloning this part. You literally can just drag them in one at a time, or what I can do is hit copy and then paste and then move him out of this little protected zone here. Uh, remember those circles? That has to do with those numbers that we saw when we enabled it. And then we can go ahead and put all our parts on and post that out. Okay, so it's calculated all our layers. We want to start down at the bottom, and yep, he's going to print them right in the order that we copy and pasted him into the program. Cure is a little bit different. Now, they're all trying to accomplish the same thing, but they're doing it a little differently here. On Cura, whenever you enable the option under special modes to say all at once or one at a time, notice that they get this, you know, the same kind of thing we were seeing in Prusa except for it's got more shape to it. Well, this really has to do with, if you go back to your printer and say, I wanna, I wanna edit my printer, I uh, go to uh, printers and say, this is the one we're doing, we're gonna, you know, this is what you're looking at, your print head settings. Also with, uh, also with Cura, it's the opposite of Prusa. So with Prusa, the first part that you drop on prints first. With Cura, the last part you put on the build platform prints first, so it's the opposite. So you'd wanna take your parts, maybe put them in the back and work your way forward, and then it'll print the parts in the front and work its way to the back. Simplify 3D is a completely different beast altogether. In fact, it doesn't matter what order that you duplicate or drag and drop these models on the build platform, the only thing that controls the order that they print is the process that you assign it to. Uh, 
Now each of these processes have everything you need to print your part uh, from the layer height to your infill to your temperature and speed and cooling settings. All of those I can simply right click, copy and paste another process and assign it to whatever model I want. For instance on this I got 0.1 millimeter uh, step up and then I've got a 0.2 layer and a 0.3 layer height. Double click it. I can select the models that I want to apply this process to that's on the build platform. It also has another very unique feature that so initially one thing you notice about this is you don't get those areas where it's showing you where your extruder could uh, collide with another part. But once you highlight all of your processes and then you say I want to prepare this then you get this little dialog that pops up and you can say I want continuous or sequential. Now if I say 55 millimeters that exceeds the height of the part which is pretty slick and that means he knows he's going to clear he can go and print all of those parts and finish them. But what if I told it that the gantry height only had clearance of 30 millimeters? Now this is where it gets interesting. So now he knows he can only, he only has a safety limit of 30 millimeters. So notice what he does. Well because we put that on 30 millimeters, notice he prints these parts to that safety limit, 30 millimeters. And then he stops he gets the other set of parts with a completely different settings, a completely different process, up to 30 millimeters. He does the same for the third, and then he'll go back and finish what he couldn't have finished earlier. And start taking them layer by layer up to the top to avoid any kind of safety concerns. You just saw a bunch of different slicers, and they really all handled sequential printing differently. Uh, but what's your go-to slicer? Do you have a favorite one or do you just pick the best one for that particular job? Leave a comment and let us know.